Hi, we're in the South Shore area, or what's known as the South Shore area, and uh, and I'm talking to Arthur <coughs> Ziegler. Uh, hi, Glad Arthur. to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so tell me, I, I I heard you're the guy to talk to um, when you're talking about South Shore, or what do you whatever you like to what do you like to call this uh, area? I, I I would call it uh, Station Square. Station Square. Yes. Okay. And because there's no, I guess that you were saying before, there's no real shore. Well, rivers do not have shores. Rivers right. have banks. Yeah. Our architectural historian was always fond of pointing that out. Yeah. And we've kind of glamorized bank into shore. Uh -huh. And over here, we really don't have what you'd even call a shore because we have a wall along the river and a railroad track. Yeah. Um, and then you have, I guess, also the, um, what, what's right behind us is the... The old p and &E Railroad Station. Which is now also... A, the Landmarks Building, which is an office building, and right here, we're sitting in front of that building, there was a magnificent structure across the bridge here under which you would stand to wait for the trolley car to get you into town or out to the South Hills, and you would walk down the set of stairs right in front of us to get on a train. Mm -hmm. And when this building was erected in 1901, and uh, for, oh, a good many years thereafter, there were nearly a hundred passenger trains a day out of the station. Wow. By 1975, when we arrived, there was two cars going to Beaver Falls morning and evening. It came up in the morning, went back in the evening. Uh -huh. And that lasted about another 10 years, and then there were no passenger trains. Mm -hmm. And like, that was like around... Like most of America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and now there... And then for a while, like, you know, this area has changed a lot. In re relatively recently, you know, it's it's been built up. Yeah, well, and something different. Station Square began in 1975, and we 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 began with an idea. We're, we're not planners. Right. We at Landmarks were, were we like to be doers, mm -hmm. and we we had been working in neighborhoods throughout Pittsburgh for the preceding ten years. And we felt that at that time, we were the third largest corporate headquarters city in America. So there ought to be an interest in uh, middle income, retail, restaurants, bars. But there wasn't. Right. We had five department stores at that time but, and some retail downtown. Right. But uh, you sort of ate in your club yeah. or at Tambellini's or Blandy's if you went out. Uh -huh. Uh, and you went to New York if you had money to buy your suit or your dress. Yeah. And so we thought uh, a series of things. One is we had a river bank and nobody had ever eaten on a river in Pittsburgh. Nobody had ever shopped on a river. Nobody ever walked along a river. Yeah. It was Point Park, which has always been empty unless there's an event. And we wanted to build a trail along the river, so we built the first one. It was about a mile and a fifth. And we wanted to develop restaurants bars, shops, and office space, right. <clears throat> and we did. And we also had a goal of showing that our form of urban renewal, which was to reuse the existing, yeah. capitalize on what we thought was an existing market, uh, capitalize on existing uh, amenities like a river. We yeah. have six riverfronts in Pittsburgh and I never used any of them except for industry. Uh, would make a, a program. Yeah. It would make it work. It would attract people into a city that did not attract people at that time. And so we set out with um, converting the uh, main waiting room of the station in this building into a restaurant. And we got Chuck Muir from Detroit. It took two years to find someone who believed in Pittsburgh and would do it. He built the biggest restaurant in Pittsburgh at the time. And then <clears throat> we did shops. Mm and office space, and a trail, <clears throat> and open space, and uh, we wanted to show also that it could be done without these huge costs to the taxpayers. Every urban renewal project of the mid-20th century was hugely expensive in terms of taxpayer money, right. loss of business, <clears throat> loss of buildings, uprooting of people, yeah. you know, get out of here, we're going to do this over for you, but yeah. you won't be here. Yeah. And so you had Gateway Center, you had Allegheny Center, you had the Lower Hill, you had East Liberty, you had the edge of Wilkinsburg, on and on. And none of it worked. Right. <clears throat> and we wanted to show that our way would work. 
Yeah. And as a consequence, Station Square was the only major, in fact, it was the largest in terms of land size, 52 acres, uh, renewal project yeah. in the 20th century, second half of the 20th century in Pittsburgh that worked. Well, it paid full renewal. taxes. It had no city money, no county money, no state money, and only a few hundred feet of sewer line paid for by federal money, and that was it. Yeah. But that's that's you took this idea, which is like real like real renewal, and real renewal means you know you do it efficiently. Renewing. Yeah, you do it efficiently by, and and these are also like really great things. It ha it happens to be that it coincides with being great things that like yes. you take uh, this culture and you take this um, all this history and you you sort of show like you highlight it and yep. you make it better. You you like use the existing uh, stuff. And uh, you also take advantage of, of the natural resources, like the, right. the river and the, the hills and, and whatnot. And, um, and by taking advantage, you, you help it, you help showcase it, but you also help yourself. It makes it better and easier and more work. Well, look what you have here. Everyone said Station Square wouldn't work. Mm. You look at the city. You cross the oldest bridge in Pittsburgh, Smithfield Street Bridge, to get to the city or to get here. Mm -hmm. You have a river that was being cleaned. Mm -hmm. You have marvelous historic buildings of all kinds, mm -hmm. warehouses, train station, office buildings, etc. And uh, you have a, a piece of land under one ownership, it was the railroad, became ours. Pittsburgh History and Landmarks owned it all at one point. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> we also were in no way a burden to the taxpayer. Right. And in fact, not only did we do this without any subsidies from the city, county, or state, and a little from the feds, we put in all the infrastructure, all the roads, and never turned them over to the city. They are still private. Really? And all of that maintenance is privately done. Wow. And it all works. And yeah. We started that in 75, and a few years have gone by, and it's still working. So all of the, there's a lot of modes of transportation here. There's the, I mean, you have the incline, you have... Two inclines, you once had two dozen. Yeah. The incline right behind us also had two more tracks, and on that, you could put your car. Actually, it was built for your horse and buggy. Uh-huh. And then you also have, I mean, you have the bridges, you have the gateway, the clipper, which is, is nearby. Um, what else? You have... Um, lots of things. Is it the T, I guess, also right Well, or? the T wasn't going to stop here when they designed it. We had to fight to get the T to stop. It later then became the most popular stop on the T. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, the inclines, as you said. They're very popular. They're tourist attractions now. Yeah. But you have to remember that we were in a city that had no visitation. Nobody came to Pittsburgh to visit. And when we sold Station Square in, in 1994, we had three million visitors a year. You mentioned the Gateway Clipper. <clears throat> when we started stations, just be thinking about starting Station Square, the owner, John Conley, had a little boat yeah. over on the Mon Wharf. He said, you know something? If you can get me over or under the railroad tracks, that'll work. Yeah. He came over, we got him under the railroad tracks. Yeah. His business turned into the largest tour boat business in America. Yeah. He ultimately bought the Circle Line in Manhattan and ran it as well, but it was actually a smaller operation than we had in Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. So that uh, all these ingredients, which you just look out and see, yeah. but people didn't. When, when, when they went to do Allegheny Center, let's say, or the Lower Hill or East Liberty, Instead of saying what's good here, yeah. they said what's bad here, yeah. and turned the good into bad, labeled it bad, and then said we have to get rid of it. You could, I mean, and you could have done the same thing with the the, the Monongahela. You could, I mean, because like, uh, at one time it was it was much dirtier. Oh yeah. And now it's it's really clean. It's uh, very clean. Well, the river cleanup has been excellent. The building of trails mm -hmm. to enjoy the river edge has been pleasant, uh, but. Um, this has been a tough town to get to recognize its own virtues, yeah. its own possibilities. It does now a much better job, but mm -hmm. it, it's really taken half a century to get there. Mm -hmm. And you, you see it going on now all over the place, neighborhood restoration, downtown being restored yeah. 
not removed as Tom Murphy wanted to do not long ago. Yeah. Uh, and Station Square has had the, for many years, the hotel that everyone said would fail. Mm -hmm. Highest rate, highest occupancy. Uh, the office space has long been the best leased up or down markets, best leased in the city, and an attraction that brings people to the city yeah. and to stay in the city and then to go over and enjoy the rest of the city. Right. But that's a matter of realizing what do we have? Yeah. And let's look at it positively. Well, what were the, what were the challenges, I guess? Because, I mean, you must have had sure. a great deal of challenges. Well, the challenges were... Uh, obviously financial. Mm -hmm. For, first was belief. Yeah. Nobody, very few people believed it would happen. And the second was where do you get the money? Yeah. <clears throat> and the third, where do you get the tenants and the sub-developers? And the fourth, where do you get people to believe that they would eat beside a railroad track on a polluted, that blend, then polluted river? Yeah. And across from the triangle, and so uh, all of those were challenges. We were able to get started because Richard Scaife believed in us because he had helped back our neighborhood work, which had worked, again, running counter to Urban Renewal. Urban Renewal wanted to clear out all the neighborhoods that yeah. we were trying to rescue. He gave us risk capital. The, um, we got some entrepreneurs who came in and opened shops and restaurants, and they worked. Uh, Chuck Muir, when he opened the Grand Concourse, said, I'll do the biggest restaurant in Pittsburgh and I'll do $2 million the first year, which is unheard of here. Yeah. And he was wrong. He did $3 million. Wow. And it has grown ever since. Uh, the other problem, since all of you have an affiliation with city planning, was city planning. Mm -hmm. City planning, wouldn't you believe, wanted a plan. Yeah. <clears throat> we wouldn't do a plan. Yeah. We said, no, we can't. We have to feel our way. We have to feel the market. Yeah. So we're going to start with a big restaurant and a little office building, conversion of an old express house into an office building. And we're going to put some shops in the freight house. Mm -hmm. and, and they were unhappy because we couldn't do a master plan. But I right. said, we just, we're just going to do this piecemeal. We're going to yeah. see what works. And we did that, and then we said, gee, we think we could expand the shops, and gee, we think we could have a hotel in the water. Yeah. And we kept that up. And fortunately, at that time, we had Pete Flaherty as mayor, and he, with Dick Scaife as the financial backer, Pete Flaherty as the mayor, uh, believed in our process, and, and we got it done. Uh, I think it would be a lot more difficult today. The planning process is much more fixed. Yeah. And so I don't know that we could get away with it today. <laughs> but it, it was impossible to plan that. Yeah. And so we felt our way with the Pittsburgh market. And then we brought in people from out of town to augment that market. And the uh, South Shore. Mm -hmm has bloomed ever since. We sold it in 94, but Forest City has added to it. And uh, I think housing will be coming here soon. That'll be great. And maybe more officer hotel, we will see. But what happened is, because it worked, Yeah. we now have Southside Works. We have a lot of development on the North Shore. Hotels, for example, office. We have restaurants everywhere, bars everywhere, downtown, on the riverfronts, off the riverfronts. What we did was validate a, a series of markets. Mm -hmm. And once that's done, the private sector came in and went to work. Yeah. And Pittsburgh is a very different place today because of what happened on the South Shore. Hmm. That's, that's good. I think we, I think we got a lot uh, for this interview. And uh, thanks for being on. Okay. Okay.